The Bible works for me. I don't think Christians need to go outside God's word for solving their problems. Well, what did Bible-believing Christians do anyway before these so-called experts on life's problems like Sigmund Freud or Carl Rogers came along? I think they probably did quite nicely with just the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. People have issues today that are beyond the scope of the Bible. I thank God for the insights of modern psychology. I think that pastors who attempt to counsel without professional training are doing a disservice to their church members. Well, it's a simple formula. Our pastor sees to our spiritual needs, a doctor our physical needs, and a psychologist our mental needs. There are times when folks had a very deep problem and might be deeply seated, and I think you need professional help for that. My church doesn't do counseling, so it's not really an option to us. We do have a list of recommended professionals that we can use if we need to. I'm T.A. McMahon, Executive Director of the Berean Call, and I'll be your host for the next hour as we consider the very important subject of psychology and the church. It's an extremely vital topic because in the history of contemporary Christendom, no secular enterprise has had such a profound influence on Christianity as has psychological counseling. In the last 50 years, multitudes of pastors have added clinical counseling degrees to their theological credentials. Psychological theories have been preached so often and from so many pulpits that they're accepted without question by increasing numbers of Christians as biblical doctrines. As a result, the Christian church in the United States has become a major referral service for clinical psychologists and psychiatrists. The critical question raised by these developments is, have they been helpful or harmful to the body of Christ? Crucial answers to that question will be the focus of this program as we consider the effect of psychological counseling upon the church. For nearly 2,000 years prior to the rise of modern psychiatry and psychotherapy, the church has ministered to believers experiencing mental, emotional, and behavioral problems through the teachings of the scriptures and in the power of the Holy Spirit. That then raises a question we all need to ponder. Was there an insufficiency on the part of God's word and his Holy Spirit during those two millennia that made it necessary for the church to turn to modern psychotherapy in order to more effectively address a Christian's problems of living? Joining T.A. in evaluating this very important subject are Dr. Martin Bobgan and his wife and co-author, Deidre Bobgan. Together, they have written more than a dozen books addressing psychotherapy and biblical ministry. Psychologist and internationally recognized critic of psychotherapy, Dr. Tana Deneen, is the author of Manufacturing Victims. Dave Hunt is the author of numerous books addressing movements and trends within evangelical Christianity, including the best-selling The Seduction of Christianity with T.A. McMahon. Perhaps the most influential and certainly the most recognized name in psychological counseling is Sigmund Freud. Born in Austria in the mid-1800s and trained as a medical doctor, he developed psychoanalysis, a theoretical method that he used for treating patients suffering from hysteria. In applying his theories, he employed techniques such as hypnosis, dream interpretation, and free association in order to investigate how elements in the unconscious mind supposedly brought about mental disorders. Freud's many unproven yet generally accepted theories include psychic determinism, the supposition that our conscious thoughts and activities are determined by traumatic incidents repressed in our unconscious minds. Freud uh, developed this idea that uh, when we experience life in the zero to five year old stages, that there are certain psychosexual stages of development that occur, and he named those. And then while we are passing through those stages, there's the repression that occurs. We repress material into our unconscious. And when we do this, the unconscious becomes the reservoir out of which we act in later life. And so because of the huge amount of 
uh, repression into the subconscious or unconscious, Freudian psychology is known as psychic determinism. Our behavior is determined by the early life activities. Freud's theory of infantile sexuality proposed that mental disorders are caused by sexual desires resident within all children from birth to age five or six. Freud um, felt that all of our problems come from our childhood, we don't get through certain stages of development. And one of the ideas that people believe that is totally a myth is that the first five years of a person's life, from that they determine the rest of the life. And a lot of ideas that Freud had just have come into ordinary thought, like the id, the ego, the superego, and so forth. These came from him and they were totally his ideas they were just his opinions. The Oedipus complex is a foundational theory of psychoanalysis. The hypothesis was erroneously drawn from Greek drama in which Oedipus unknowingly marries his own mother. Freud saw the mythological story as symbolic of a universal lust-hate relationship between children and their parents. Alfred Adler and Carl Jung were disciples of Sigmund Freud. Although they were schooled in psychoanalysis, they developed their own theories and methods, some quite at odds with those of their mentor and each other. Alfred Adler, also an Austrian physician, is best known for his focus on the individual himself rather than abstracted concepts such as the id or the Oedipus. Like Freud, he believed mental disorders were rooted in childhood experiences particularly inferiority complexes. Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, was a protege of Freud's who expanded his beliefs about the human psyche to a link between all psyches in his theory of the collective unconscious. In his concept of archetypes, Jung took psychoanalysis from biological urges to the non-physical realm of the spirit. Freud, Adler, and Jung are considered the founding fathers and pillars of modern clinical psychology. Their theories and methods influenced latter-day psychotherapists such as Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers, who further expanded them into humanistic concepts of needs, self, and self-actualization. Another stream of psychology distinct from that of the psychoanalytical and the humanistic approach is behavioral psychology. B.F. Skinner is perhaps the best known in this methodology. Skinner taught that the thoughts and actions of humanity are all responses to stimuli external to each person. A person's genes, biological makeup, and environmental factors determine how he or she will act. Free will and personal responsibility are negligible in this theoretical system. There are more than 500 psychological therapies. Most of them are variations of prior theories, expanding or modifying them, and in many cases, abandoning prior concepts altogether. These many psychotherapies range from the mundane to the bizarre, from the innocuous to the dangerous, yet they all have at least two things in common. One, they are merely speculations and have no scientific validity, and two, no particular method is any more effective than any other. Dr. Tana Deneen provides some insights into how the psychotherapeutic process has become so influential in our society. In the 1960s, we thought of psychology, psychological treatment as something that some people required, some people who were mentally ill or who had serious problems. And in the 1960s, 1970s, the idea became prevalent that, you know, psychology is really too good to be wasted on the sick. 